Let us pray. Dear Lord, may we ever pray with the knowledge that it is in your hands, and may we ever behave with the understanding that it is in our hands. I want to thank Joan for giving me the opportunity to share with you this morning. I say thank, but in reality, she twisted my arm. You know, in the gentle way that Joan twists your arm, and it was gentle, but it's still sore. Um, you see, I had a few moments of reverie, and some images came to my mind. I shared them with her, and she said I should share them with you, and I will. But before we get into that reverie mode, I want to give you a little background. Some of you may not know it, but my father was uh, a minister, a chaplain in the army. And what I came to learn about sermons was that you have to try to match the sermon to the readings. That is what you have to do if you are clergy, but I'm not clergy, so there, <laughs> seriously. Seriously, the reading from John this morning not only makes it simple for me to match the lesson to the product of my reverie, but it seems almost meant for it. Thank you again, Joe. John 3.16. You've seen it, you've seen it, you've been to sporting events, you've seen them on TV, the Super Bowl, basketball games, some guy in the sign, in the crowd, holds up a sign that says John 316. John, John 316, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow, it is about God and God's love. As I recall, when I was about 12 years old, I was visiting my grandmother in Richmond, Virginia, and I got a call from my mother in Chevrolet, Maryland. And she said, James. And when she says James, not Jimmy, I know, okay, trouble. The gist of the call was she wanted me to sign up to get baptized uh, in, in the cycle they had in the Baptist church where I, I grew up. Uh, every four or six months there would be baptism and my sister who was 15 months younger had already been baptized and my brother who was older had already been baptized and now she wanted me to get baptized. Well, here I am, the guy who wants to be a doctor, the guy looking for science in all things. Um, and I'm not sure where I am with this. Uh, so. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I'm sitting in the, in the balcony at Shiloh Baptist Church at 9th and P Street Northwest. And I look above the tabernacle, right above the choir loft, and there is a phrase, the three word phrase, God is love. Wow, God is love. Uh, and it, it struck me. Did I see the words or did the words see me? I began to substitute the word God for places where the word love was, especially in songs. Yeah, that's really scientific. But, you know, love is a many splendor thing. God is a many splendor thing. Love makes the world go round. God makes the world go round. I can feel it. It was not perfect science, but it resonated perfectly with something deep inside of me. I can tell you, that my faith has evolved and grown and twisted and turned and sometimes faltered through the many wonders and travails of my life. Uh, I cannot begin to know the entirety of God, but whenever I have paused, I can reach out and hold on to a primitive, unchanging truth. God is love. So, about this reverie, I know I said I know if I said the word meditation, some of you would say, yeah, I should try that. And some of you would say, ah, oh, yes. Some of you would have a conniption. And there are some of you, probably one or two of you, that would actually have a seizure. So if you feel a seizure coming on, just turn off the cameras, okay? Just turn off the cameras. Uh, but I'm gonna use a different strategy. It's called guided imagery. That is where I get to tell you what to think about so you don't have to think about what it is you're not going to think about, okay? Um, but please, bear with me. Um, for the next five minutes, there is no place else you have to be 
There is nothing you have to do. There is nobody that needs you, except we need you to be here to share your energy with us. So, get into a comfortable position. Sitting up, back straight, eyes closed. Breathe in through your nose and out slowly. That's good. Take another deep breath. As you breathe, let your eyes, your eyebrows, and your forehead relax. Breathe. Let the corners of your mouth relax. Breathe. Breathe. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your legs. Just breathe. Be at peace. Now I want you to imagine that you're standing in front of mirrors. You know, the kind you would see in the dressing room of a clothing store, three mirrors, where you could look into the reflection, the reflection of yourself and the reflection of the mirror and yourself and the mirror into infinity. Breathe. Now imagine that they are not just three mirrors, but mirrors all around you. And you're standing in the center. Breathe. Breathe. Imagine that there are mirrors below you and above you. Breathe. Imagine that it's not your body in the center but a light, your light, your soul. Bathe in the warmth. Bathe in that light. your soul, your essence, beyond the flesh, your soul. Beyond the blood, your soul. Beyond the pain, beyond the effort, your soul. You are endowed with that essence. 
that light, that force. If what Jesus taught us is true, if what God showed us by allowing Jesus to die on that cross for us, for our souls, for that which he has given us, and that which he asks us to return to him, then perhaps we can call it love. And that love that is generating warmth and light is seeking to spread infinitely beyond the windows of your mirrors. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.